This is a 91 Nissan 240SX Rack and Pinion. Uh, customer didn't have the hard lines, but I'm gonna build it without it. I was talking during the video, but I had too much background noise at the shop, so I'm doing a voiceover. Right there is a punch lock on the housing. You can drill it out or cut it. I like cutting it because it's a lot easier. After I'm done cutting it, I'm going to put it in the part washer and clean up the rack and get ready for the rebuild. Notice where the rack is mounted onto the vise. Do not mount it onto the cylinder body of the rack. I'm going to use a plumber's wrench to remove the nut. The nut should come out smoothly. It is easy for the housing where you cut to damage the nut, so be careful. Don't force it. I'm not going to remove the nut all the way yet. I'm going to try to pop the seal out. I have a plug from an old hard line that I just welded up. You can see right there. I'm going to thread it onto one of the hard line holes and I'm going to turn the rack and it should pop the seal out. I like doing it this way, it's cleaner and it will tell me that the, that the center Teflon is still good and still holds pressure. I'm using an old U-joint to turn the rack. Right there the seal popped out. I have a catch bucket on bottom to catch all the old fluid. You can see the seal right there. Pay attention to how the seal comes out so you can put it back the same way. I'm going to mark the adjusting nut and the, to the housing so I can put it back to the same position later. Don't mark the jam nut, mark the center. I'm going to loosen up the jam nut with a plumber's wrench. Now I'm going to remove the adjusting nut with a 12 millimeter wrench. There should be three washer inside, a spring and a rack guide. Pay attention to the way you remove it so you can put it back the same way. There's a spring. Two washers, a 
and the red guide. Now you can remove the three top bolts with a Torx 10. Clean the housing and valve so you can put the seal back in later. Now I'm going to remove the shaft from the housing. The shaft should be smooth and cleaned. If the shaft is rusted or have damage, when you put the new seal in, it's just going to leak again. I'm going to wire brush all the sharp edges down so when you put the new seal in there's a less likely chance of the new seal getting damaged. Cleaning out all the old fluid and grease before removing the inner seal. Just have a bunch of rags. I have a tool that will grab the seal from the inside and pull it out. I've seen people use a socket on the other end to push the seal out, but be careful, there's a big washer inside the housing that can damage the rack internally. The seal is out, uh, the big washer should slide out by on its own. Washer is out, I'm just cleaning it up from all the old grease.
I'm gonna clean the wreck again from all the old grease and oil. Putting the washer back in, it should slide in smoothly. Now I'm going to remove the bottom seal. I'm going to use a rag to put it on the housing and use a little pry bar to pop the seal out. It shouldn't have much pressure, it should come out easily. Cleaning out all the old grease and oil again. I'm adding a little bit of grease right here to the lower bearing. Here's the new seals and O-rings. I don't have the kit because I buy all my seals separately in bulk. The two big seals for the body. That's the bottom seal. The top seal and the O-ring. I'm going to install the bottom seal. I'm going to use a socket to hammer it down. The socket should be a little bit smaller than the seal in diameter. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to hammer the seal in. I'm going to install the new seal onto the shaft. This is just a plastic film to protect the seal from, from the gears and it will help slide it down. The spring side should be going in first. I have an old inner tie rod that I welded in place so I can hammer the new seal in. That is where I welded the tie rod into place so it doesn't move around when I hammer it.
the seal is in place you can check for pressure by covering the port with your finger and pushing the shaft a little bit it should have resistance pushing back Here's the valve. There's four Teflon on the valve, but I don't change the Teflon unless I know it's completely broken or bad. Putting the DIN washer back on, then the valve, and the new O-ring. Putting the right side seal on, again using the, the film to protect the seal when installing. Installing the nut, it should have a little bit of resistance because you're pushing the seal. Tightening the nut with a plumber's wrench. Here's the rack guide. Washer, spring, washer again, and the, the adjusting nut. I'm not tightening it all the way yet. I still have to adjust it at the end. Replacing the top seal, there's the bearing and the top seal. I have a socket to hammer the seal and bearing out. The socket should be a little bit smaller than the opening.
installing the new seal here's a little socket it doesn't take a lot of pressure just a little bit of hammering and it should sit into place the bearing has a little bit more pressure so you have to hammer the bearing more than the seal Reinstalling the top housing. Tie in everything by hand. Don't use power tools. I'm going to adjust the rack right now. I got it to the setting that I want and I'm going to tighten up the jam nut with the plumber's wrench. I'm making sure it turns smoothly. Installing the new inner tie rod with Loctite. I'm just showing you the adjusting nut. I adjust it a little bit tighter from the original position I had before. You can see it. Because the rack is a little bit worn out. I'm going to find some hard line to pressure test it. 
but that's about it the rack is rebuilt I'm gonna grease the gears and put new boots in after it's pressure tested